that comes with the word touch the people of God this morning wherever you are the word of God will do you good the word of God will bless you it will transform you in the name of Jesus Christ spirit of God we humble ourselves and say Lord have your way Lord do what you are in business of doing you are the miracle worker you are the change maker let there be a change let there be a miracle in the life of God's people. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today, <laughs> I am going to teach about living hope. Living hope. Amen. Amen. Not dead hope. Living hope. And I want to believe that, I want to believe that by the time we finish this, which I don't think it will be today, praise the Lord. By the time we finish this, poverty will end in your life. And I'm saying this, that the word of God 
today, today, we bring poverty to an end in anybody's life. And all you need to do is yield to the word. Yield to the word. Believe the word. Amen? Some people think that if they are giving money, if they are giving money, all their problems should be over. Some people think that it takes money to end poverty. No, sir. No, ma'am. No. It takes knowledge to end poverty. It takes knowledge to end what? Poverty. The Bible said, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. We just read from the daily dose, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is it that makes a Christian to become vulnerable to poverty? Should a Christian come to a point where you are impoverished? A Christian. Should a Christian be impoverished? The Bible says that we have been redeemed unto a living hope through Christ Jesus. A living hope. And I have told you here the meaning of poverty. And for those of you that are just joining us new in this commission, I will read it again. Praise the Lord. Because it is important that you understand what is afflicting you. Poverty is the conspiracy. Poverty is the conspiracy of uh, hopelessness and helplessness to produce shame and humiliation. Poverty is a conspiracy. It's a gang up. It's a gang up of hopelessness and helplessness that will produce shame and humiliation in the life of any man any man, when hopelessness and helplessness, when they come together in the life of any man, in the life of any man, they will produce shame and humiliation. So, for a Christian not to be poor, you must avoid a state of hopelessness. And helplessness, helplessness. You must avoid those two things from coming together in your life. The moment you allow one, it will welcome the other because they are cousins and close friends. Do you understand what I'm saying? I said to you, they are cousins and they are brothers. Hopelessness will bring helplessness. Helplessness will bring hopelessness. Where one is, it will bring in the other. And yet, and yet, a Christian shouldn't be in that state at all. A Christian should never be hopeless. A Christian should never be helpless. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel 37, you can open it. Concerning a nation of Israel. Concerning the people of God. They are God's own people. And they were children of the covenant. And of the promises of God. When we sing the song, Dry Bone Must Live Again. We don't understand the message behind Dry Bone. We quote it, but we don't understand it. Praise the Lord. In Ezekiel 37, from verse 17, from verse 11, sorry. And I will encourage you to read from chapter, from verse 1 all the way to the end. 
but we don't have time this morning to do that. But from verse 11, then he said to me, Ezekiel is saying, the Lord said to Ezekiel, son of man, these bones, these bones are the whole house of Israel. These bones, ah, they are the whole house of Israel. How can a nation be represented by bones? Normally a nation is made of a great people, a great army, great industry. Praise the Lord. But here, God said to Ezekiel, look what the nation of Israel has turned out to be. They may seem to be alive. They may seem to be walking. They may seem to live. But spiritually, this is what has become of Israel as a nation. He said, they said, they say, who is saying now? We have said, then he said to me, who said to me? God said to Ezekiel, isn't it? So I told you the best way to understand the Bible is who is speaking. Who is speaking? And who is he speaking to? And what is he speaking about? And so we have three people speaking here in verse 11. Then he said to me, who is speaking here? Come on, who is speaking here? Then he said to me, who is speaking here? How can something so simple be complicated? Then he said to me, Ezekiel is narrating what God said to him, isn't it? Son of man, now, son of man, who is speaking now? To who? These bones are the people of Israel. They say, who is speaking now? They say, who is speaking now? Thank you. Do you see why Bible study is important? Just in one verse now, see the way some of you are struggling. Because you have three people speaking in one verse. Ezekiel is speaking. God is speaking. The nation of Israel is speaking. Now the question is that, who is he talking to? Who is God speaking to? Ezekiel. And then, who is Ezekiel speaking to? And then who is Israel speaking to? Hello? Who is Israel speaking to? <laughs> Do you see why we need Bible study? Praise the Lord. The three people are involved in this discussion. Three people. And God is saying the reality of what Israel has said. He said, the situation we are dealing with, I didn't create it. This is what God is saying, Ezekiel. I didn't create the situation. I didn't bring the nation of Israel to where they are nothing but ordinary bone, dead bones, dead bones. He said, I didn't make it. I didn't create it. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Israel said, Israel spoke. Our bones are dried up. And so they produce dry bones. And our hope is gone. And they, pro they produce poverty. And we are cut off. They produce helplessness. It's in the word of God. It's in the word of God. In one moment, a people of God brought themselves to poverty. Not by a foreign army. Not by invading army. Not by war. But by what? The very word of their mouth. They say, our bones are dried up. They say, our hope is gone. They say we are cut off. They say. They say. And so 
Jesus said in Mark 11, you will have whatever you say. That's what Jesus said. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says shall come to pass. He said, you will have whatever you say. You will have, not somebody else. Not somebody else. And here we are. A nation of Israel, a nation of God's people, a nation of the beloved, people of Abraham, people of Jacob, God's own elect. They brought themselves, they brought themselves to poverty. Many people speak the same way about Nigeria today. Amen? Many people they see nothing but hopelessness and helplessness in Nigeria. If given the opportunity, they will just leave Nigeria to anywhere, anywhere. Praise the Lord. Have you thought about it? If you appreciate God for what you have, God will give you more. Have you thought about it? The people in Sudan will like to have Nigeria as a country. Because for over one year, they've been living under bomb and shelling. And there is nothing that happened. It was not a foreign army. It was their own people. One group versus another group. They are killing their own, slaughtering their people. In Sudan, in Africa here. Not very far from Nigeria. And you, you have nothing good to see in Nigeria. And so, according to the words of your mouth, according to the thoughts of your heart, you have written off Nigeria. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. Nigeria is hard. And so you have developed hopelessness and poverty in you. Not because somebody made you poor. Because by your own mouth you created your destiny. Do you know that people in Gaza, people in Lebanon, they would like to have Nigeria as a country where there will be no bomb dropping in the night. Where they, can, they said, if only we can sleep in the night. People in Ukraine, what? crime did they commit that their nation is being re reduced to rubble are you listening to me you are writing off your nation and yet other people are just saying if only we can have a quiet night rest if only we can rest in the night without bomb without fear of artillery everything destroying everything we have they consider it a miracle to be alive every day in ukraine you don't think much of that. They consider it to be a miracle to be alive in Sudan. United Nations said that it is the greatest human displacement in all history, what is happening in Sudan. And there was no foreign army. What about Ukraine? What about Lebanon? Invasion. Look, what about Syria? You are complaining. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? It is your complaint that is making Nigeria the way it is for you. You get what you sow. The, the seed is the word of God. When you sow the word, it will germinate tomorrow. You have condemned the nation where you live in. Whether it is Nigeria, whether it is Germany, whether it is America, whether it is Russia. Listen. People in North Korea, there is no war there, but they are at war with their leader. They can come together like this to praise God. In North Korea, you have the liberty and the freedom. You can pray all night. Nobody will disturb you. You can go on the street with a bell, evangelism. Repent. Be born again. Nobody will do anything to you. You can do it in some nations. You can be arrested. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what it means to have hope against hope? Do you understand? Now, we are ending the year. In about six weeks from now, 2024 will come to an end. 2024. And I said to you two Sundays ago, I said, yet, before the end of the year, a miracle will take place. I said to you, a miracle will take place. But if you don't believe, it will never work for you. 
And the moment you believe, you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I was talking to mommy yesterday, just yesterday, and I said to her, I said, no month, we are just about middle of the month, right? Just a little bit more than the middle of the month, isn't it? And I was talking to her last night, and I said, no month from January till now, no month has put me under as much pressure as the month of November. I was telling her last night. I said, no month has put me as under pressure as the month of November. And you will not understand. And yet, we have built what we have built at the back in the same period. And yet, it didn't put me under such pressure. So what is happening? So what is happening? Life is spiritual. And so, when you say you will end well, you will end strong, you will end better, and the enemy unleashes all the attacks to make sure you don't end like that. When you choose your destiny, that will determine the arrows the enemy will fire at you. But the Bible says, resist him steadfastly. Resist him. You had the message. You will end well this year. And you never take a step that will cause a change. What are you expecting? When you watch football, those of you that go to watch football, when there is one one and you're only looking for one goal to come on top, what do you see? No, what do you see? When they are equal and they need one goal, or when one team has one goal and wants to secure it to the end, what do you see? Do you see them playing, joking, laughing? What do you do? They have one goal advantage. And it is 10 minutes to game over, to game over. 10 minutes. You watch football. You have never learned anything from football. I don't watch football, but I have learned more than you that watch. Praise the Lord. When they have one goal advantage, what happens? No, what happens? They fortify their defenses. Whatever happened, you must not cross the, the defender to go and put a goal there. They would rather clear you and the ball away from their penalty area. Is it not true? They will fight to the end to keep that one goal advantage. And if it is 1-1, one, one, they will fight to score extra one. All their strikers, the best of their best, they are in front. You now, you are almost at the final game. Not semi-final. The final of the final. This is the ending of the year. What are you doing? You wake up the same time. You do the same thing. You expect a different result. Is it not madness? Is it not madness? Even if you live in face me and face you, wake up, leave that place. Yes, wake up, leave, trek. If you must, to, if you want to trek, trek. Go to a place where your hope will come alive. Go to a place where you'll be inspired. One time we went on holidays in the UK. As we went, we were near the. Uh, we were staying in a hotel near the river, inside the city. Very good place in East London, in the city centre. And then during the, during the lunch time, I'll tell mommy, let's go to the city. It's just a walk away from the hotel because the hotel is right in the city, Foster Hotel. And then when we go, all the bankers and all that, they will be on break. They will come out to have their lunch. Just sit outside. And then when we go there, you will see the marble building bankers, headquarters, insurance companies, Lehman Brothers those days, their building was marble from the beginning and class to the end. And so you go there. What do you think I go to do? To eat lunch? No. The bankers are eating lunch. No. I came to eat faith. I would touch the building, especially Lehman's brother, because it used to be one of the best buildings in that place. I would touch it. I said, Lord, man made this. I'm better than the man that made it. Are you hearing me? 
I didn't go to eat lunch. The bankers will be in their suit, eating lunch, laughing and joking. But I am there to feed my spirit. You look at their building. You look at the rail network. You look at all the architectural design. You look at all the creativity. You look at everything that is going on there. You marvel and you say, Lord, I can be better than this. Papa, Bishop Oyedekpo, he said he was driving to Kaduna one time. He said when he passed the refinery, the Kaduna refinery is by night. When he passed it, he saw the building, he saw the structure. He said, ah, the person that built this does not have two heads. The person that built it does not have what? Two heads. And so he said to himself, I'm going to build the biggest church. Many of you don't know. That was where that dream was born. Architects told him it's not possible. But him is also an architect. He said it's possible. Amen? Amen. What, what is our limiters? Our mouth? Our tongue? Praise the Lord. I saw one of our sisters. I don't know if she's here. But I know one of the uh, guys is here. And I said to oh, her, you must be in church on Sunday. She said, it's not possible. I said, what is your name? She said, her name is possible. Ah! <laughs> True story. True story. The, 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 the boss is here. And, uh, and uh, I think Esther also is there. Right? Is Esther here? Yes, Esther is here. And she was there that day it happened. I said, what's your name again? She said, possible. I said, you'll be in church. I said, it's not possible. <laughs> I said, by the way, is she here? It's possible here? No, no, it's possible here. Are they, it's possible here. Where is she? I don't just want to hear yes. It's possible here. Praise the Lord. Is she here? Oh, she's on duty. And so I said to her, you have to be in church. And say, she said, it's not possible. I said, your name is possible. She said, yes. Why do you say it's not possible? He said, because she's on duty. I said, but it's possible. She said, no. I said, but your name is possible. She said, yes. <clears throat> I said, but it's possible. She said, no. Praise the Lord. And I came close and I said to her, you will be in church tomorrow. Praise the Lord. You will be in church tomorrow. And then when I'm done, when I was done, I went to her boss's office. And I said to the boss, possible needs to be in church tomorrow. She said, why? She's working. I said, I know she's working, but you will exempt her to come to church. Actually, I asked for possible and Esther to be in church. And she looked and she said, I will release Esther. I will release possible, but I will not release Esther. Praise the Lord. That was good enough for me. You know why? Possible says it's not possible. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Possible said it's not possible. If only we can have faith. The Bible said to us in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Ah, faith is the substance, the substance of things hoped for. Let's stop there. Faith gives substance to your hope. And I said to you, hopelessness and helplessness is a cause of poverty. And the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So, if you have no hope, your faith will be impotent. Praise the Lord. Israel said, our faith, our hope is gone. Is gone. Whatever that will destroy your hope, you must destroy it. The very things that will make your faith or your hope weak. Because no matter how strong your faith is, without hope it will not work. 
when you lose hope in your nation, no matter how much I preach to you, you cannot make it in this nation. You must change your stand about your nation for you to prosper in that nation. It's the truth. When God asked me to come back to Nigeria, I didn't want to even hear it. I know I fasted. I did 21 days fasting to make sure that God changed his mind. And I only suffered myself for nothing. 21 days is not a joke. Amen. I said, Lord, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I said, Lord, to do what? To do what? What I didn't ask myself is what am I doing in Germany? Of course, I was pastoring. But no matter what you're doing, when God said move, you better move. And then as God will have it, my father in the Lord came for holidays for just one week. And I took the matter to him and said, Daddy, see what the Lord is telling me. But I cannot go now. I said, there is enough churches in, Germany, in Nigeria. Why must I go there? And in sending me, the Lord said I should come and start Eden here. And this place was a sorry. If you see this place then, the grass here was some. Praise the Lord. And you would think that when God sends you like that, God will also send the money. Say, okay, I'm sending you $1 million. Go and start the work. Praise the Lord. I left. I left Germany. Because my father and the Lord said to me, son, if you don't obey God, even in Germany, you will suffer. And me, I know go suffer. I know go back for bread. Are you hearing me? Me, I know go suffer. I know go back. Listen now. The beginning of suffering is disobedience. Not lack of prayer. No, no, no. You need to understand. Uh, please, get me this morning. Please, let this woman go back and stand. Or shall help her to go to the back and stand. Uh, say thank you, Jesus. The instruction you don't like is the instruction that will make you. Are you hearing me? The instruction that seems to humiliate you is the instruction that will exonerate you. The instruction that will ridicule you is the instruction that will deliver miracles to you. And now, a few years later, since I came back from Germany, <laughs> to offer me to travel anywhere, it has to be by the voice of God. Because the greatest part of my joy and ministry is right here now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It depends for you what you are looking for. Some people are looking for some things. But do you know what I am looking for? I'm looking for the will of God. When Israel said that everything is gone, everything is lost, what did God say to them? I want us to go back to Ezekiel 37. Our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Verse 12. Therefore, 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 ah, say therefore. therefore. Prophesy, I said to them. Therefore, 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 prophesy and say to them. Thou says the Lord God, behold, O oh my people, ha, ha, ha. somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I will open your graves and will cause you to come 
and from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is the key? Prophesy. What is the key? Prophesy. What is it to change your situation? Prophesy. What is it to rebuild your finances? Prophesy. What is it to renew your hope? Prophesy. What is it to end the year well? Prophesy. We, we read. We read. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. It says in verse 2, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Amen? If you are going to end well this year with a good report, what do you do? Prophesy. He says, verse 3, by faith we understand. By faith, listen to me this morning. Suffering is about to end in your life. Yeah. He says, by faith we understand that the walls were framed. They were framed by the word of God. The walls, he says, did you see S there? So it's not talking about just physical world as we know it. He's talking about destinies. He says, by faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. You, the way you end this year, it is the word that will make it like that. Praise the Lord. This nation you are condemning, there are people that would love to have Nigeria as their nation. The marriage where you are condemning, some will want to be in that marriage at all costs. The children you are writing off, there are people that would like to have them. Are you hearing me? The husband that is no good to you, there is a woman that will say, if I just have him, leave it the rest. The wife you say is no good. There are some husbands, if only I will have that wife. Amen. Amen. What do you use to change hopelessness? What do you use to change helplessness? Faith. 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 What kind of faith? God's kind of faith. I said, I will end the year well. I said, I will end the year with a great testimony. And so, as the year is coming to an end, the devil is unleashing all his arrows. But I understand. I understand. Praise the Lord. Amen. David said that those that do business in the high sea, when you do business in the high sea, David said you will testify of the goodness of the Lord. And those that do business in the high sea, are those that take the big steps. Praise the Lord. Why are you limited? No, why are you unable to, you are not able to make bold steps. You are believing that you will end well this year and you do nothing to change that. You do nothing to change that. No, what do you think that will happen? God can only walk as you walk. Are you hearing me this morning? God can only walk as you walk. If you don't walk, God will not walk. And so what do you do? Locate opportunity. Opportunities. Locate it. Exercise your faith. Complaining does not change anything. The, post, the prosperity of a Christian has nothing to do with the nation where you live. The prosperity of a Christian has nothing to do with the nation where you live. But if you are hopeless in Germany, you will be hopeless in Africa, you will be hopeless in America until you deal with the hopelessness in your life. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise the Lord. We are begotten not to a dead hope, 
not to an empty hope. We are begotten to a living hope. It is for this reason Christ died. It is for this reason that he raised from the dead. So that hopelessness will come to an end in your life. When you look up to heaven, you will have hope. But many of you never look up to heaven. You know why you don't look up to heaven? Because you have zero investment in heaven. Jesus said, wherever your treasure there is, there your heart will be. Those that invest in heaven look up to heaven. No. Do you understand what Christianity is? Do you understand what Christianity is? Christianity is not about coming to church. No. Christianity is not about just uh, reading your Bible. No. What is Christianity? Christianity is the intrusion. Listen to me. Christianity is the intrusion of Christ-like life into humanity to erase your humanity and transform you to divinity. Is it too much grammar? You need breakfast. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is an intrusion of Christ-like life. Christianity is a life of, let me explain, Christianity is a Christ of life coming into your life. And when he comes, what he does is that he will neutralize your human limits. He will neutralize your humanity. He will bring you. He will bring you to divine. The Bible says we have been made partakers of his divine nature. We are made partakers. We come into Christ. Christ comes into us. When he said, give me your heart, he also said, and I will give you a new heart. Jesus said, if you give me your heart, I will give you a new heart. In Ezekiel 36, he said, a new heart will I give unto you, and I will put my spirit with it. But you hold on to the old heart. You won't give it to Jesus. Your heart is with you. You don't play with your heart. Are you hearing me? You don't play with your heart. And yet, that heart is sick. Seeking by poverty. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. That's another translation. Into a living hope through the resurrection. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you understand it? I want to read the same scripture for you from the Amplifier Version. He said, praised, honor, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He said, by his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. To an ever-living hope. It's not the hope that diminishes. It's not the hope that fades. It's an ever-living hope. This is to the res resurrection of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. He says in verse 4, we are born anew. <laughs> born into ah, born into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay. Imperishable. Unsolid and unfading. Reserved in heaven for you. Inheritance that cannot be spoiled. That cannot be perished. In heaven for you. For you. Say for me. Say for me. I, I, I wish you would read this even after service. Read it from the Amplified Version. Born anew, your former birth, your former birth may have born you into poverty. But when you are born in Christ, you are born anew. You are born into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay. Nothing will change it, nothing will decay it. It is imperishable, unsolid, and unfading. Reserve in heaven for you. Who are being, verse 5, I want you to look into yourself. He said, who are being guarded, garrisoned by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you understand what Peter is talking about? Peter is saying, Every believer has an inheritance. 
We have an inheritance for us in heaven. Do you think that you will have such an inheritance in heaven and God will just let you die miserably on earth? Do you think that God will just pile up inheritance for you in heaven and let you suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer until you die? No! No, sir, no, man. That inheritance, some of them you can leave it here. Some of them you can enjoy it here. He says, those that dwell in Zion shall not say, I am sick. He said, those that dwell in Zion, he says, serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take away sickness and disease from the midst of thee. Are you hearing? He says, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. So the connection of access to the inheritance, to prosperity with God is serving the Lord. How can you say you are a Christian? This year, you have not done any big thing in the kingdom of God. There's nothing big. Listen to me. The worst state for a Christian to be is to a floating state. Hello? The worst state, the worst state for a Christian is for you to be in a floating state. What is a floating state? It's a state where you just go to church and go home. Go to church. Go. Nothing stresses you. You don't use your faith for anything. You don't act on anything. Anything that's to be done in church, you find your way to go out of it. And yet you call upon God to help you. Have you understood what God said? God said, I will honor those that honor me. Those that support my kingdom, I will support them. That's what God said. The best way to end poverty in your life is to support God's kingdom. You may not like it, but that's the truth. Man may give you one million. Are you hearing me? Man may give you one million. It will run out. Man may give you two million. It will run out. Praise the Lord. Go to the one that nobody can stop the tap from running. Huh? Go to the one that is the source. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me explain something to you. You see, you may be sweeping the church every day, and nobody even thanks you for it. Nobody even remembers you for it, but you are sweeping the church. And then one day, somebody passes by and says, Ah, this person is always sweeping the church. And said, I want to bless this person. And he goes, he gets your account number. Praise the Lord. He wanted to send 5,000 to you. I'm telling you how God works. 5,000, just to give you transport. As he was writing 5,000, God said, cancel it. He said, okay, let me make it 50. As he was about to write 50, God said, cancel it. Praise the Lord. He said, Lord, what is going on? God said, continue. <laughs> he said, okay, 100. God said, cancel it. Yeah. The person involved has pleased heaven. And it is God that walketh in us, both to will and to do, according to his good pleasures. And this day, the man may have said, I want to bless you, but it was God that orchestrated it. Are you hearing me? And so the man said, okay, I will make it 100,000. As he was about to write 100, he was writing 100, 100,000, 100,000. He was making the zero, zero. He, hey! One million. Somebody shout hallelujah. <clears throat> he said, I will just tear it and write another chance. He was about to tear the Lord said, don't tear. Don't hear. You may have written, but I have approved. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I am telling you true story how God works. It is you that believe that God cannot do it. God cannot do more than your faith. The problem is that when you are serving, you are looking at people. Is Pastor Isaac seeing me? Is mommy seeing me? Uh -huh. Is uh, my head showed there? You are not sweeping. You are doing a show. And the Bible says God is not mocked. 
and the man wants to bless you when he wants to write five thousand the lord said counsel don't write at all he said lord but i want to bless her he said she's my daughter leave that matter between me and her he said the one you are dealing with that one is very very crooked so let me and her finish our business he said lord let me just give even treasure he said don't write and every time the brother passes you, but I want to bless this person. But are you hearing me? There are people I wanted to bless. As I want to do it, I am restrained in this church. In this church. Their name came up for a blessing, but when you want to do it, the Lord said, Don't do anything. Why now? He said, it's between me and them. The Bible said, the secret things belong to the Lord. Only the reveal belongs to us. You can't force God. It's him that walk it to us. Let me tell you, you can be in your house and you pray so fervently about the church and God will send somebody to bless you. And it may not be anybody from this church. It may be an outsider you have no business with and he will just come and bless you. What are you talking about? He says, my people don't know me. My people don't know who I am. Praise the Lord. He said, I will make your enemies turn their backs on you. I, the Lord, I will make your enemies. Listen to me. Renew your faith. Renew your hope today. What does it take? It takes the word of God. What was the key for the nation of Israel? God said to the prophet, prophesy. It was a nation versus one prophet. Now it is you versus you. What can you do? After this service, Lord, I must end well. Lord, I must end well. Lord, this year I have had your word. I will not end ordinary. Lord, the seed of greatness is in me. I must end this year. It's not too late. We had a program one time in Bremen, in Germany. I went there. A man that has been looking for a job. <laughs> he had been looking for a job in Germany. He picked me, and the pastor said, Pastor, this is your driver for the three days you are here. This is your driver. You must understand to have drivers in a place like Germany is expensive. Expensive. Are you hearing me? And then he would pick me up in the morning, pick me up in the evening for the program. And I'll be asking him, what is going on with your life? And he'll be talking. And the day he dropped me at the airport, and I said to him, the job will locate you. He dropped me, I think it was a Monday morning, he dropped me at the airport. And I looked at him as I was getting, I said, the job will locate you. I said, I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. And he bowed and said, Pastor, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Within the same week, the job called for him. Are you hearing me? The job called for him. And when he went, his salary was more than what he was hoping for. Because the anointing has spoken. He just drove me for three days. He drove me for three days. And in that three days, his destiny was turned around. Many years later, when I arrived at Lagos Airport, somebody rushed to come and greet me. He said, Pastor, good evening, sir. Pastor, you just came. I said, because the person was huge. I said, who are you? He said, sir, Bremen. Bremen. He mentioned his name. Ah! Is that you? He said, yes, sir. I came to Nigeria for business. He has grown. Hallelujah. It was three days service. Are you hearing me? Three days service. We are having program in Agege. 
a young man drove me two or three times. He abandoned me in this church. And you said, ah, what a lawlessness. And he still smiles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I drive myself to go. Well, there's nothing wrong. Thank God I can drive. Sometimes he fair helps me because he fair is driving the other car. He did it two or three times. He disappeared. And I will ask, what happened to him? And I'll be told he was, we went to his business. I will laugh. You know why? The will of the transgressor is hard. In this church, the program is at Agege. By strength shall no man prevail. You can work so hard. The day the anointing will say, your story will change. Are you understanding? I had the story of the man called Dan Gote today. The root, the root of his success. I don't know if it's true. I have not been sure because Archbishop is gone. And it is written that the same Dan Gote and his staff or manager were traveling. An archbishop needed to travel to Europe for a program. This is what was written. An archbishop in the house, came inside the plane with his assistant. And they were asking, who will stand up for him? And his, for archbishop to travel in that plane. Because the plane was full. An archbishop said, I must travel. And they said, nobody stood up. But Dan Gote and his manager stood up. And said to him, sir, you can have our seat. And said, let's go out of the plane. And they said, Archbishop looked at him and said, son, today, your business will be had all over the nations of the world. Are you hearing me? One service of the anointing can take away all the oppositions in your destiny. And this is what God is saying. Serve me. When I'm with you, nobody will touch you. In me, you are secured. In me, you are safe. And you think that all your hard work put together will make a difference. Young people, you may not have money, but you have time. Have you thought about investing that time in prayer, in soul winning, and say, Lord, silver and gold I may not have, but this is my mouth. I will bring people into your church with it. And Lord, let me make a deal with you. One soul, 50K. Is it okay? Is it okay? You are looking for one million naira to start business. You say, Lord, a deal. One soul, 50K. Lord, I'm not trying to charge you, but you, you know my condition. I need this money. And so, one million divided by 50, how many? How many souls? Look at, look at the way you are looking at me. Look at, young people, look at the way you are looking at me. Look at, after you say you are smart, with smartphone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. After you say you are smart. You say, Lord, every soul, 50K. I need, I need one million to start this business. And Lord, I am giving you 20 souls for one million. But Lord, I know that you are in the business of putting extra. I'm not limiting you. Even me too, Lord. I will go up to 25 souls. And the Lord will not say a thing to you. Five souls, nothing. Ten souls, nothing. Because faith does not observe figures. Fifteen souls, nothing. Twenty souls, nothing. Twenty-two souls, nothing. 25 souls, nothing. You go and look at the business you want to start. Why are you looking at the business you don't have money? Say, God is owing me. Are you hearing me? I have done my part. He must do his part. And so, at the right time, he will supply. You are looking around. You want to be a distributor of a product. 
You are going around. You have not gotten the one million, but by faith you have believed that God, you have given God credit, he's owing you. And as we're going around, one person called you and said, what are you going around for? He said, I want to be a supplier of this. I want to distribute this. He said, look, are you serious? He said, come, 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 come. He said, I have the product. He said, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for a distributor. He said, come, I want you to distribute my product. He said, but I don't have the money. He said, don't worry, headquarters has spoken to me. Are you ready? He said, yes, but I don't have the money. I don't have shop. He said, doesn't matter. Are you ready? Ready. He takes you in. He said, this is good. Five million naira. I'm closing it for you. Be the distributor. Praise the Lord. Be the five million is yours. You know what? You don't have a shop, but be bringing people, they'll be carrying. Anything they carry is your own. No matter the price, it's your own. It is there for you. And so now the man gave you shop, gave you good all at the same time. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You think God has stopped from doing that? It's you that is working on unbelief. The first person you met, you said, I have this product. The man said, I've been looking for that product. I need. You took the man, but the man just instantly, three million paid cash at the price you gave him. And by the time the man took his money, your profit was 700,000. You were looking for one million capital. Now you have made a profit of 700,000 in one transaction. In one transaction. That is the God we serve. You don't measure God with times of men. You measure God with divine timing. At the right time, he will show up. Shout hallelujah. But many people are crooked with God. They are fraudulent with God. They are unfaithful with God. And God said, with the unfaithful, me too, I will be shrewd with them. When we were small, growing up, small in terms of knowledge, if a pastor asks us to do anything, it is our dream. Those days, I we go to church, when pastor share the grace, I will stay in church till I take the pastor home, drop the pastor before I come and carry my family. My family will stay. Service will finish about 12 after 12. I am telling you, I will wait until pastor is finished. Sometimes 3 o'clock, sometimes after 3. I must take pastor home before I take my family home because God comes first. To even hear pastor say, do this. Pastor, call you do that. It is, it is, ah, it is a miracle. It is a miracle. But many of you don't get it. Don't understand it. Praise the Lord. I want your destiny to change. He says, prophesy, and there will be a change. And Ezekiel prophesied. This morning, I'm prophesying to you. Wherever you are. You don't have a relationship with God. You know it. You've been on the run from God. You know it. From January to today, you cannot say one thing you have done in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, when you pay your tithe and your offering, everybody does that. So there's nothing about that. And that's the truth. Tithe is a debt you owe to God. Offering is what you give when you come in his presence. But outside that, God measures your love for him in what you do after you are tithe and offering. That's the measurement of your love. The other tithe and offering is lawful giving. It's according to the law. You are doing it because God said you should give. But what about the one now that comes up? That is what changes destiny. That is what changes destiny. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are here this morning or online or in the micro church, you know you've not been faithful with God. Apart from coming to church, from, from January to this November, you have nothing to show, nothing to show as a Christian. Please. Please. I want you to stand on your feet. I don't want to ask you to come forward because there may not be enough space here. But stand on your feet wherever you are. You know it. January to November, you have nothing to show. If they ask you, what is your in kingdom investment this year? You'll be thinking, um, 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 I paid my tithe, 
mm, um, I gave up. That's nothing. That's nothing. I'm telling you. The Bible said, except your righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you will by no means see the kingdom of God. Sadducees and Pharisees are religious people. Everybody that goes to church gives tithes. Everybody gives offering. But free will support of the kingdom. Do you know how much it costs to, to preach the gospel? Do you know? The program we have in Agege, Pastor said, do you want to tell them the cost? The television we bought is about one point... Please tell me now, Mr. J. 1.8 million. Just the TV. Just the TV. Don't start dreaming if you carry it. You will not carry it. Praise the Lord. Salvation is free, but the gospel is expensive. And God needs those that will support the gospel, not the salvation. Because you can get born again anywhere. But to preach the gospel requires investment. Are you hearing me? We just ordered for equipment. Equipment for the IGG program. We just ordered it. It was by faith we ordered it. The equipment, we ordered it. So that we can, people can hear us more. That equipment alone cost over 20 million. Just for people to hear us. And it is one company that paid for it. Shout hallelujah. It is one company, one company that paid for it completely. The company didn't have the money. The company didn't have the money. But I spoke to them. Are you hearing me? It's not that the company had an abundance. The company didn't have the money. But the company borrowed the money, borrowed the money. And they said, I am paying it for the equipment for evangelism. Tell me why God will not defend such company. Do you understand? Do you understand? The company borrowed and paid it completely. Tell me why heaven will not support that business. Tell me why God will not see to the progress of that company. You borrow to buy a car and you say, Lord, help me to pay it. What's his business? No, what's God's business in it? You borrow to buy a land and you say, God, help me to pay it. For what? You borrow to yourself. Why should God be involved? You borrow to start your business and say, Lord, help my business to work. Even tight, you didn't pay. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Love God. The Bible said in Romans 8.28, he said, for we know that all things work together for good, not for everybody, not for every Christian, not for everybody that goes to church. Listen to me. Please put that up here. He says, for we know. We know that all things work together for our good. To them, to them, to them that love God and are called He says, if you love me, your situation will turn around for your good. He said, if you love me, challenges will favor you. He says, if you love me, contrary will become contrary to the contraries. I will speak for you. Praise the Lord. Everybody. I like the Amplified. He said, and we know. And with great confidence, we know. That God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. Ah, ah. I, I, listen, I'm too excited. Causes all things to work together as a plan. So that means your challenges comes into God's plan. Your persecution comes into God's plan. Whatever the enemy will do,
Thus says the Lord, stop deceiving yourself. Because before you, I existed. I made you. And I know you. If you will put your trust in me, if you will give me your heart, I will see to it that your life follows my plan. And my plan will be your life. Thus says the Spirit of God. Lift up your hand and give him praise. God causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God to those who are called if you love God if you are called according to his plan and purpose every challenge will become a miracle every opposition will become your partner ah, somebody today your life is changing them somebody's situation is turning around Ah, he said to Israel, said, turn and leave, turn and leave. As you turn around today, you will leave. Uh, and yet God will do a miracle in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is not difficult to know whether you love God, whether you've been mocking God. And yet for those that love God, the Bible said he will make all things work together for your good. It means that the Nigerian economy will work to your advantage. It means that your family will favor you. It means that your working place will be favored. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you are here and you know you've not been honoring God, you've not really loved God. January to today, you can't say what you have done for God. But you've only always been praying for God to bless you, to remember you. Today, God wants you to remember him. Amen. If you are here, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking about those that know that from January to today, you have nothing. There is nothing you can say that you have done for God. You know it. Please, the rest of you, sit down. Please, keep your hands, keep your hand raised, wherever you are. Keep your hand raised. I'm about to pray for you. Remember, nobody is forcing you to raise your hand this morning. But if you are raising your hand, just raise your hand because you want a change. Because you want to commit yourself to God. Because you want God to embrace you. You want to activate the plan of God into your life. Even those in the micro church or online, wherever you are, The power of God is coming over you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you this morning. Have mercy. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my deceit. Forgive me for mocking you. Mocking the church. Mocking the gospel. But Lord, today, I repent of my sins. And I believe that Jesus is the only Son of God. He died and he was raised again by God the Father. And through him, I obtained mercy and forgiveness for my sins. Lord, today, I make a promise to serve you in spirit and in truth to serve you with all my heart Lord from this day let your plan become active in my life and let everything work together for my good from this day forward in the name of Jesus Christ I give my life to Jesus Christ the Son of God, and I receive by faith salvation 
and the Holy Spirit into my life from this day forward. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Live for him and he will live in you. Take your seat. After the service, please just take your bag and your Bible. At the right hand, we have a place for you. Praise the Lord. And how do you do it? You start now. You start now. You go out. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about the kingdom of God. Go and do something for God. You have heard what I said to you. Take the word I've spoken to you from the word of God. Make a deal with God. And you will never see poverty in your life again. Amen. I decree that poverty has come to an end in your life. Amen. I abolish that dangerous demon of poverty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you submit yourselves to God. May God's prosperity and blessing come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today. Today. From today. You will move forward. Amen. You will move forward. Amen. 2024 you will end well. Amen. You will end with a testimony. Amen. You will end with good news. Amen. I speak to you the word of God. Amen. You will not end as a victim. Amen. You will not end as a beggar. You will end 2024 gloriously. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive it in Jesus mighty name. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Shout a big hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. You are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' precious name.